Way back at the beginning of this year, we talked with 50 of our customers and we asked them, how do you work? And it turns out that while everybody needed to do things like make builds, they all got that done in different ways. Some would run GitHub Actions, then call out to EAS to make a build while their GitHub Action waited for the build to complete. That was frustrating since they had to maintain two separate CIs at once, and they were paying for both of them at the same time. Others would run half of their processes locally, like lint and type checking and end-to-end -end tests. Then they would run builds using EAS build. This would sometimes cause subtle and hard to debug issues since developers had subtly different development setups on their computers. And so earlier this year, we released two features to help solve some of these problems. One of them was custom builds. This allows you to run arbitrary code after running the EAS build command. And we also released something called automatic update previews, which allows you to create an update every single time you push a commit to GitHub. Developers started using these features, but they needed more flexibility. So today we're announcing that we're going to take this to the next level and we have a new product that we're calling Workflows. It's Expo's version of a CI CD service. Workflows allow you to have complete control over your development process while also making your whole team consistent. There's a lot to go over, so I might as well show you how these work. So let's jump right in. All right, let's get started. I'm here on the Getting Started document and going through it, the first thing we need to do is to set up our project. If you don't already have a project, you can see all the commands here you need to create your first Expo project. Under that, we'll need to create a directory called .eas with a directory inside of it called workflows. This is gonna be our workflows directory and it's gonna house all of the workflows for our app. And the first one I wanna make is called helloworld.yaml. Inside of this hello world.yaml, there are three keys we need to know about. The first one is a name, which defines the name of the workflow. We also have on, which defines the trigger that the workflow will trigger on. And finally, we have jobs, which is a list of jobs that will run when this workflow is triggered. The one I'm gonna make is a hello world YAML. And so this one has got a name of hello world. This trigger is saying that this should trigger on every single branch because I have this star glob here. And then finally, it's got a list of jobs. This one only has one job and it's hello world. It runs one step and that step is to echo hello world. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna create a directory called .eas and then under that a workflows directory. This sets me up to create my first workflow file and I'm gonna call it hello-world.yaml. Inside here, I'm gonna paste that workflow that we just saw in the docs, the one that runs Hello World. Since I want this to trigger when I merge to GitHub, I'm gonna go and connect this in my project settings to my GitHub, so I'm doing that here. I now wanna push a commit to my GitHub, so I'm adding all the files I just added. I'm going to commit them, and then I'm gonna push them up to my repository, which should make this trigger true. And now I'm here on expo.dev and I'm gonna click on the hello world workflow and here it started. Once it runs, I'll see that it spun up a build environment and that it echoed hello world just as we expected. Okay, great. Let's move on to some other examples that are a little more practical to people's day-to-day -day work. The next one I wanna show you is called publish update. And this one is gonna run TSC, and then it's going to run lint, which are custom steps. And then after that, it's gonna run a pre-package step called update, which depends on the TSC lint step. Now, when we watch this one run, TSC lint runs, and then after I scroll down, I see the logs come in, and then after that, the update job starts running. After it installs all of the dependencies that it needs, it goes ahead and publishes the update, which I can see was successful here. The next one is called fingerprint. This one will find the fingerprint of the native layer of your app and decide whether we should make a build or publish an update. This is the first step and it goes about finding the fingerprint and then outputting it as a variable for other steps to use. Then in the next job, it's called get build and we go and find if there are any builds with that particular fingerprint. And then we can make a decision if we should go ahead and make a new build or if we found a build and we should make an update. Now when we go watch this one run, it runs the fingerprint 
And I can see it outputs the entire fingerprint JSON here. And then after that, it decides whether we should make a build or not. And since no build was found, we should go ahead and make a build. So workflows are currently in preview and only available to EAS customers with the on-demand production or enterprise plans. Since we're still ironing out issues, we don't recommend using workflows for critical CI CD processes yet. And if you have feedback about workflows, please send us an email at workflows at expo.io, or you can go ahead and join the conversation on Discord. I'll leave the link in the description below. We hope this will help you and your team automate your app development and release processes. And thanks so much for checking this out. We cannot wait to see what you'll build.